goodness, I'm going to buy another car. You are not sharing your product. Who do you think is going to share it? No one. Maybe there will be one person who believes in you. The product can be exceptional, mm. but if it has no identity, mm. it's, it's, it's hard to make it tangible or to, to remember it. Mm. You're not going to exist. And here's something tough to hear. Your success to happen, you need to be ripped off first. The case study to what you want to be is there. It's there. It exists. It's there. Mm -hmm. But that person in the back room or wherever they are, they are dreaming and wishing so bad to be successful. Yeah. But they are their own gatekeeper. Whew. Whatever. And you're live on Dead Radio. Welcome to another episode of Dead Radio with your boy Inni. And uh, we got a legend in the building. I don't know, like the last two weeks we've been getting legends, it's crazy. Uh, I'm going to let him introduce himself and then we're going to get into his life story and try and extract as many jewels as we possibly can for you guys. Cool. Yeah, Yeah. my name is Justice Rendani Mukeri. I'm a film director, a photographer, a painter and all things creative. All things creative. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. Okay. Um, I want to start at the beginning of your story. Uh, where are you mm. from? So I'm from Soweto, okay. Kimville. Okay. Um, I'm Venda, ah, uh, dope, ethnicity. Dope. Okay. So my parents are, uh, my mom is from Soweto, Chiawero. Okay. Then my pops was born in Venda, ah. um, Jerere. And then they met. But, yeah, yeah, then, yeah, he came to, to Soweto. Chiawero, and yeah, I started working there and was doing a bit of boxing, being taught by or being coached by my grandfather, Crazy. my father's mom. Then that's where my parents met. Okay, so, so I'm a Soweto guy. You're a Soweto through and through. Yeah, through and through. Tell us a bit about <clears throat> your childhood growing up there in Soweto. Yeah, I mean, my, my childhood was beautiful, man. Yeah. It was. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it I was I mean, you amazing. already had a best friend, your yeah, brother. I was, yeah, I was born you with a blessed. best friend. So yeah. my childhood was, was beautiful. It was sweet. It was full of love. Yeah. Um, both my parents were very, very loving. They are very, very loving. And my grandparents are as loving, if okay. not more. And yeah. you know, kids are closer with their uh, grandparents. grandparents. So yeah, I was always. super close with always. my grandparents. They were... Friends, mentors, parents, and all of the above. And yeah, my mom is incredible. So is my dad. But my dad left uh, us when we were 12. And yeah. that was yeah, a bit of a shock because yeah. he was an incredible, loving guy. So I didn't understand why he'd leave. And his reasons when I got them much later in life did not make sense yeah but yeah. you know as you grow sometimes you know those challenges are what shapes us yeah, so i it leaned, builds you yeah i leaned into it because it gave me character it gave me grit uh, it's not nice it's painful but if i had to live my life again i wouldn't change it anything right. yeah, yeah, yeah okay so when does the seed of creativity get planted in your mind the seed of creativity happened when I think I was about seven and we used to love listening to jazz with my dad and my twin brother and the one time on a Saturday hanging out with my dad yeah. uh, listening to jazz, probably Blue Train or something like that, he made a drawing on a cassette tape of my brother and I and him sitting beside him and I saw that and I thought, Jesus, that's, that's amazing, my dad can draw, I can too. Ah. Then that was my first spark of creativity. It opened your mind. Yeah, then when I went to school, I used to just have the confidence that I can draw better than everyone. So it, ah, when. Because my dad can draw. Yeah, in grade one or two, when we had those exercises where you have to draw a tree or mm. an elephant or this, I drew for everyone. Oh. Because I can draw. I'm the best. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah I, I just knew that I'm good at it. Where, where did your dad learn how to draw? Especially in that time. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. No, so... He's self-taught. 
Yeah, he's self-taught. He said he had a best friend growing up who used to draw incredibly. Okay. And when they were hanging out, his friend would always draw on newspapers or he was always drawing. Mm. And he was really good. And my dad envied that. And okay. he started like trying it out. Okay. And I asked him recently, like uh, November last year, and he told me that story. And I thought that was so cool and That's interesting but he he says he's not good at drawing but my recollection of that drawing yeah. was like amazing but yeah. you know how a seven year old imagination is exactly yeah. exactly yeah, yeah. okay mm. dope and you guys were listening to jazz obviously your mm. dad was the one who was playing the jazz yeah it's crazy when i look at your work now yeah yeah it looks like if I add a jazz soundtrack to it, it yeah. will go perfectly together. Like Yeah, thank you, man. I'm glad you feel you feel that way because my huge influence in all my art is music. Because okay. music has um, feeling. Yes, yes. I think music I receive music uh, through feeling first. Mm. Then the words come, come later. Come later. Yeah, I'm not Still too that. invested in the words, but I'm I'm so drawn to how the it makes feeling. me feel, and that inspires me to bring that into my work. So I lead with feeling, and idea comes second. Okay. You know, so okay. how does it make me feel? And sometimes I want to make a painting that feels like a specific song I was listening okay. to. Okay. You know, like there's a song. I have found or discovered during COVID by John Ayano, mm -hmm. who grew up in, when I followed his story, he grew up in Canada, yeah. but his, his father is from Japan. So he was okay. born in Japan. His mom is Canadian. Canadian. Yeah, yeah. And they spent like a short amount of time in Japan and his mom took him with to Canada, to Canada and he yeah. never connected with his dad, but his dad was a musician. Yeah. And his dad, in the time they were together as a child, wrote a song about his son <clears throat> and about his shoes. Okay. And Jonah found this song, that, or the songs that his dad, dad made, yeah. and listened to them without hearing the meaning behind the Just song. the feeling. Yeah, he followed the feeling and he added to the song. So he made a, his own remix of the very same song with the same musical bed and his dad's lyrics. And he added his vocals onto that. And he played it to his father and he asked his father what the song is about. And his father told him it's about his shoes and yeah. blah, blah, blah. And the lyrics he had written in English into that song, like worked well with what his I father had that. written. So yeah, I, I worked is there the with you. Yeah, for me, feeling is the way. Okay. Artistically. Artistically. Or maybe just in life. Yeah. You know, yeah, I'm, yeah. Very, I'm very intuitive as a, as a person. If I get into a space, I already know where I stand and mm. how I'm received. And, and how the I temperature in the room. Yes. Everything tells me my intuition. I'm so in touch with my intuition. I know that, okay, this is... I'm welcome or I'm not welcome. I'm not welcome. Or this is a connection I can pursue or a connection I shouldn't pursue. That's a great yeah. skill. I don't know if I should call it a skill. Yeah. It's a very great skill to have as a creative. Yes. Because your fuel, your fuel is your emotion, mm. but learning to control your emotion so it yeah. doesn't like... Yeah, I mean, I mean... It's, it's very important. I'd like to think as individuals, as creatives and individuals, what works for us is different. For some people, uh, being able to control your emotions artistically is what makes you who you are artistically mm. and gives mm. you a voice. And for some people, the lack of control and mm. how they just let go is what gives them their own voice. That's true. So, That's true. So it works both ways. It right? works both ways. Mm. And, you know, as, a, as an individual and a human, I'm a very calculative person mm. and I'm, I love being in control. Mm. So that's why I don't drink and that's why I don't, okay. I don't smoke or do anything that alters my consciousness, consciousness because yeah. I want to be 
in control, in control and as present. much as you possibly can. As, yeah. All the way, not yeah. as much as I possibly can. I want to be in control all the way, but obviously some things you can't control and yeah. that's where you, you give in. So for some people, being able to let go is what makes mm. them who they are. You know, it's, it, it, that's where the genius is, mm. you know. Mm. And for me, my connection with myself and my creativity and all that I do requires me to be in control of everything. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, you're 12 years old, mm. your dad leaves the home, yeah, yeah. completely breaks your heart. For sure, yeah. How do you start dealing with this? Because um, now you're transitioning to becoming a teenager. Yeah, yeah. How are you and your brother talking about this? Yeah. Even with your mom, how are you guys processing? Yeah, this I mean, huge for shit? me, obviously, that was a huge heartbreak. Mm, mm. I was shocking and jarring uh, when it happened. But the blessing I had was that my mom was very open okay. in terms of communicating and she was she's very vulnerable you know so she sat us down and said guys this is what's, what's happening. happening you know your dad left this is what he's saying mm. and when he left as we all knew we thought he's just going to visit his mom you know okay. he went to Venda and a month down the line he's not coming back and that's not usual yeah so yeah. my mom sat us down and said guys this is what's, what's happening, happening? And we couldn't believe it because my dad is my hero. I'm like, no, man, not, not my guy. He wouldn't do that, you know. Mm -hmm. um, then every step of the way, my mom spoke us through it and gave us the platform to express how we feel. And in our expression of how we feel, she guided us. You know, I remember being very angry and bitter and my mom strongly advised that we shouldn't hate our father because mm. he's still our father. Mm. We should love him and respect him because she still loves him and respect him, regardless of his choices. Shout you know? out to your mom. That's beautiful. Yeah, there was, I mean, my mom taught us unconditional love, mm. Mm. you know, because love is required even where you are not met with love. Mm. Mm. And where she was not met with love, she, she still... Love brought love yeah. and that was an incredible teacher for me you know experiencing that and being equipped with that tool directly and indirectly mm. you know I was able I love my father mm. like with all my heart yeah. regardless of what, what we, happened, what happened. Mm. you know I still respect him I still see him as a huge part of my life mm. Mm. you know even when we reconnected yes I, I became Bitter and How angry. long was the, the gap? I reconnected with him um, in person when I was 21 and I had just started working. You know, so from 12 to when I was 21, 21. I was like now an adult. Mm. And I recall calling him and asking him to meet because I, I wanted to hear his side of the of story. Of the story, yeah. You know, Why what did you happened. Leave? And his side of the story made me even more angry. So I had to take time to soak it in. Yeah. And when I was ready, I was able to forgive him. And for me, what my mom to taught us was that forgiveness is for yourself. I can't forgive my dad based on what I expect him to say. Because it's very easy to say, yeah, if he comes and he say, gents, my bad. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm messed up, mm. I'm sorry, and he touches all the points I want him to touch. It never happens that way, mm. you know. So it's always empowering to be in a place where forgiveness it's is for, for you. yourself. Yes. So I, f I was able to arrive at that place where I could forgive him for me mm. so that I can breathe. So regardless, every time I saw him, even when he says what I don't want to hear, mm. And even if it triggers me, it does not have power over me because I'm able to, in time, to breathe and settle back to love, mm. you mm. know, which is the most important love, my own mm. and my own forgiveness. And I also to be able to see him as a human being, mm. because 
you know, as people, we see our parents not as human. Put they, we, put a, we put them on a pedestal. Mm. And they are complex, just like we are. True. He's complex, you know, and just like I'm complex and True. with my own shortcomings. And True. I can't have double standards. Yeah. You know, because I'm not perfect. That's where Neither I've failed yeah. True. as bad as he has. True. It's just not with a child or children. But that's life. That's life. Life is know? not perfect. Yeah. yeah, life is not perfect. Yeah. Okay. So, during high school, mm. is that seed that was planted by your dad drawing you and your brother, mm. is it growing in your mind? Like, does it burst through the earth and now you can start seeing the plant. Like, are you yeah. still drawing? Are you doing other creative things? Yeah, so when I was a kid, I grew up in a very special home, mm. which really affirmed us. Mm. Both my mom and dad affirmed us. So our house was like a, almost a spaza shop. So we sold cool drinks, quarters, okay. okay. cakes, biscuits, and mm -hmm. So we, mm. we sold a lot of things. So it was like a spaza shop. And growing up at my parents' house, both my mom and dad always said to my twin brother and I, you know, the spaza doesn't do well when you guys are not here. You guys are the mm. ones that are able to sell out the that. stock. Yeah. You know, so it, in everything we did, they always said, if you guys are doing it or you guys have a hand in it, it's it going, will succeed. It will succeed. So they gave us that mentality. So what that did in my journey was, and that time when my dad left, my brother and I figured out a little business, which was an IT business, to help Crazy. maintain people's computers in the neighborhood. So we'd help sort out viruses, we'd give them, or, you know, what? upgrade the computers, uh, software. uh, softwares, yeah. with sometimes, you know, install softwares like Word and blah, blah, blah. And Where some, did you guys get that from? Like, curiosity. in the township? Like, we were, yeah, I remember. Where, you, where does that come from? And you're live on Dead Radio. Whoa, 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 whoa. I know you would love to have this bag. This bag. This bag. Well, here's your chance to win it. Here's how to win. Step one, join and become a member by clicking the link in the description below. Step two, comment under this video. Step three, relax. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna put all the members into a raffle, assign a number to each of those members, and then to make sure that we're not scamming you, we're going to use Google Number Generator to pick a winner. I know you want this bag. And you're live on Dead Radio. My mom had a close friend who lived in the south, the suburbs there, close to Southgate. And we went to visit her once when we were super young. And she, you know when older people are hanging out, mm. they mm. said, yeah, you guys go play in, the, in that room. Yeah. And there's a computer there. Ah. And yes, that thing got me. So, Another seed being planted in Yeah, so my obsession and interest in computers started there, there. like as a kid. Then in Clipton, there used to be a market mm. that mm. had people selling different things. Okay. And amongst the things they were selling were computer parts, monitors, okay. this, motherboards. And my brother and I would go there and save up money and buy a motherboard, a Pieces. hard drive and this, and put it together without really knowing what you're doing. Yeah, but yeah. then we were able to, to piece it together because one of our friends in grade eight gifted us like an old Atari computer. Okay. And we opened it to see where what goes. So the parts okay. we got in Clipton, we put them together the way reverse engineered. engineered. Yeah. Then it started there. Okay. Then so from grade eight to metric, we were deep in computers, selling computers, building mm. them, fixing them, programming, and, and all of that. And alongside that, we had a business where my brother and I made a signage business for people's house numbers. Oh, outside by the gate? Then. Yes. Okay. 
because I mean and my dad was gone and there wasn't really much money and my mom was the only breadwinner so we and before he left we grew up with the spirit of working and yeah, yeah. being creative in how Using we make money. Yes. Yeah. So that was one of our businesses doing these synergies. Mm -hmm. Then we also sold CDs, which is pirating. Oh no, I think we all, all had did. that business. Yeah, exactly. 1,000%. So then from drawing, we got into graffiti. Okay. Then we were introduced to graffiti through one guy who came to my house to get his computer sorted out. His name is Mzwandile Putelezi and who later brought Osmik, who's, mm. who's the guy that does the hip hop. Back to the city. Back to the city. Yes, OG. So Osmik brought his computer as well and there was also, yeah, a, a few of their friends brought yeah. their computers, but those guys went to design school. So mm. when they brought their computers, we stole their softwares oh, and files. Crazy. So I remember copying Zwandile's uh, Illustrator and freehand files because he used to do these illustrations for magazines. Digitally. Digitally. Yeah. And it was my first time seeing digital drawings and we stole okay. all those files and the programs and we installed them in our On computer. computer yeah. And we'd redraw them to practice how to do what okay. he, he was doing. And I learned design that way. Mm. Then they became our friends and mentors. Okay. And through that, we built a portfolio without knowing that our portfolio would lend us an opportunity to work in advertising. You know? Mm. So At this time, you guys obviously, the dream is not to go into advertising. I did not know what advertising was. Yeah. And we were yeah. doing that at like grade 10, 9. We mm. were busy mm. messing around with those programs from Mzwandile and mm. Osmik. And Osmik is our age. He was at Highlands North at that time. But okay. Osmik is a genius, man. He's ahead of his yeah. time. Yeah. You know? He's always been ahead of the curve. Bruh, he's like decades ahead. Yeah. He's yeah. one of the smartest people I know. Yeah. Yeah. And our age, he was our mentor. You know, and through through that we were learning design through Mzwandile um, and Osmik, and uh, there's another one. His name, his graffiti name was Knock One. Knock One. Okay. Yeah, amazing, okay. amazing. He he's a, he does. He's a DJ now. So then we did design, and we also learned producing. So we we're making beats and mixtapes mm. and all of that, yeah, from grade 8 till we were like 21. Okay. And we're, yeah, I, I've always been a multifaceted, curious Individual. artist. So I wasn't just doing one thing. I've always done many things in, yes. at the same time. Yes. But I give each medium enough time to, to know how it works so that I can be creative. So I don't shorthand anything. I think even just... When I think about your story now, you grew up in a time where it was way easier to be focused on various things. I mean, we live in a time right now where people's attention span is like so small Short, yeah. and like technology is like hype, like increasing that, right? Mm. So at that time when you were young, you could focus on, okay, I'm going to learn how to draw. Yeah, okay, yeah. I'm going to learn about computers because yeah, yeah. you didn't have TikTok to like dis Distract. disturb you yeah I guess you know I look at it this way I think the generation now yes there's the uh, challenge of distractions which mm. is social media it's, mm. it also distracts me um, but I think the blessing of this time is access yeah, the and access. the time when in the early or mid 90s early 2000s no when I was there was yeah but like at the not, library yeah, yeah not yeah, as yeah. accessible yeah not accessible like not right as now. accessible mm. in that time it took a lot more effort to to find out about things whereas now anything i want to do is my fingertip away you know my brother and i are starting a, like a small clothing brand more capsules and just an expression of what we like or we just want to create things that we love wearing and share with you know our immediate society if yeah. they like they like 
but figuring that out is so easy. Yeah, yeah. It's so much easier. Yeah, it's just on the tip of your true, true, finger to true. find out, oh, this is true. where I can produce this, this is where, you know, I can go to China if I want to do mass production, I can go to the city, you know, all those things. It's a lot more accessible true, to true. figure it out here. Yeah. You know, whereas then you needed to book time at the library to go to the internet. The internet was still very much a limited resource yeah. in terms of what you can find. Yeah. Local things were not so accessible on the mm. internet. True, true. Like true. you couldn't look in Johannesburg, where can I produce t-shirts? True. They'd tell you where to do that in New York it, or I in China. I feel like you know? because it was harder, people yeah. genuinely loved things. Yeah, right? I guess. It wasn't like about hype at all. Like, oh, I can't say it all, but like people yeah. loved things. And because it was so hard to get things done, mm. it built your skills character, like, yeah. and your character. Like, but it's a gift and a curse. It's a, it's gift, a gift and, and a curse. curse. I just either think, way you look at it. Yeah, either way you look at it. And I mean, even in this time, mm. you know, I'm still very much participating in the creative space mm. as someone who's learning even mm. though I, as I may look like I've figured out my things I'm still participating as someone who's learning mm. the challenge of now is for you to stand out mm. you really have to be exceptional because there's true a million other true. even younger people yep. doing what you do at a yep. high level. level yes you know so for you to do what you want to do at a high level it takes yeah. so much more effort. It's even harder. It's yeah. harder than yeah, back yeah, then yeah, yeah. because True. back True. then I was a lot more special because there aren't mm. many young, curious Mines. black dudes yeah. who yeah. are, oh my goodness, these guys can do graffiti. They design. They this. Right now, everyone can do that. True. Technology has made it accessible, which is amazing. Mm. You know, even with, I got into directing at the back of technology making it accessible. Mm, Some yeah. guys my age, when they started, they were still shooting on film, which is a lot more expensive true, and true. inaccessible. Yeah, yeah. You know, when I started, digital. I'm shooting digital. Yeah. I could even shoot on any of these cameras. I hear that. Even to date, yeah. the smaller cameras are even more capable now to shoot like a world-class short film mm. or even a blockbuster. You could. True. True, you true, know, you don't need true. an Ari Alexa, which it's a double-edged sword. I think it's more a blessing yeah. than a challenge. Than a challenge, yeah. You yeah. know, so yeah. yeah. And I think as uh, people, how you look at something is, impo is Perspective important. Perspective is everything. Perspective it's will everything. set you apart. Because yeah. if you look at our times as, oh my goodness, everyone has a podcast. Everyone is a painter. Everyone is a photographer. Everyone is a... Then life is, is going to be that for Yeah. You. But if you look at it as, oh my oh, goodness, wow. I get to have a podcast. True. I can vlog. I can I be can, a photographer. And I can distribute it to the world. Yes. Then your outlook and approach to it is of abundance. Mm. You know? So... Abundance versus scarcity, scarcity. mindset. Yes. Scarcity yes. only challenges you. True. True. Yeah. It challenges you. Yeah. I mean, there's space for everyone in the creative industry and any other industry. Yeah. There's space. More so in South Africa. Mm. If you go mm. out to the world, yes, it's, it's saturated. Mm. Everything mm. is saturated, mm. but people are still emerging. I always say Africa mm. right now is like America in the 1920s when everyone was building like those mm. industries, like the mm. oil industry, the telecoms industry, like... It's fertile hundred percent and you can claim your space true true and do you know how you claim your space you claim it mm. it doesn't there's no trick mm. Mm. go out there mm. and create and put yourself out mm. Mm. you know there's mm. no you know there's no special room for people that became successful mm. off of what you want to be successful mm. Mm. they just like you the difference is that they stood up and went to go and make. they claimed their space you take it, you must take it. Yeah. And it's not going to be easy. You know, taking it means waking up and doing it, even when you don't feel like it. Mm. Even when you feel like, oh my goodness, it's, this is a rubbish painting. Yeah. It does not matter. Yeah. 
it's a rubbish painting to you. Someone else will love it. Mm. Mm. If they yeah. don't love it, it's fine. You didn't have a painting anyway. True. You'll have another one. True. Just yeah. keep it moving. Keep the ball rolling. Okay, so you and your brother now are working on this portfolio, which eventually mm. ends you up in the Abbot. advertising yeah, space. Yeah. How does that happen now? So, uh, my brother and I, again, we're super multifaceted amongst yeah. making t shirts, making signages, as house numbers of people, fixing computers, fixing computers oh. um, skating, Dope. doing music. Um, events in our yeah. neighborhood um we used to sell buy and sell products or okay. second hand things like okay. if if you come and say hey i want a cell phone or i want a fridge i want a, we i was very much in touch with the second hand okay. market and just and flipping flipping we're yeah. flipping things just through um junk mail mm, mm, or mm, sometimes mm. i'd buy products that people don't know exist in normal stores. Like mm. one of our biggest selling product were MP3 players we bought from game for a hundred rand and we sold them for 350. No one knew. And what we did, our trick was we'd buy these MP3 players and just rock them. And ah. people would be like, oh my goodness, that's cool. What's, is that a, mm. What is this thing? And it was just a Small the little, USB, I remember those little USB ones. Yeah. Looking thing. Before they were popular because mm. everyone had a Walkman. Yes, yes, and now yes. my twin brother and I would rock up with these small things and it's playing music and you can have 50 songs. They're like, wait a minute. And that's what would flip. Okay. Then we moved from there to iPods before they were like popular. Mm. Mm. You know, so yeah. Okay. So you guys now, business is good. Yeah. At that time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what, in your mind, you and your brother, what was the plan? What, what are you guys thinking, like, in terms of, like, business or life? Like, how are you guys thinking about the workspace that exists in yeah. the world? And where do you fit Yeah, in? so for us in that time, because we're not entirely informed about industries we could yeah. get into, we were just making things work, mm. especially because we had no metric. Ah, and not ah. having metric shuts you out from a lot more mainstream especially work then. opportunities, yeah. Yeah. you know? So uh, my brother and I thought, okay, cool. We know how to flip because we grew up in a spaza shop, basically. Mm. And been flipping. we had the confidence of anything I touch tends to gold. So, um, we were selling colognes, we were doing a lot of things. Then amongst all those things we were doing, we encountered a guy called Neo Mashiko and he came to us wanting to buy an iPod for his wife, as a, his wife then, as an um, anniversary present for her. Then he came okay. to my house and he saw all these designs and drawings mm. and t-shirts and graffiti and a lot of things we were doing and we were making flyers and he said yes this guys where did you guys study and we we're like no we didn't no. study i'm still Self trying to get yeah. through metric i was 20 i was uh, it was before 21 i think we met him when we were 18 mm. and i was in grade 10 i think mm. then it's like yes this, you guys are kick-ass and then he connected us with a guy who worked at yfm Okay. And we started doing flyers for YFM, for YFM. and we were going to do like, they started supporting our mi micro uh, music events in the okay. hood. Okay. Um, then through Neo mm. and his mentorship, Neo changed our lives. Okay. Like that. He's one of the guys that came into our life and shit happened. Okay. You know, a lot of people used to meet my twin brother and I, and they were blown away by us and they'd make these promises and none of it Nothing came to would fit. happen. Yeah. Typical but Joburg things. Yeah. yeah. Now is the one guy that said, listen, you guys no. are going somewhere mm -hmm. and we went somewhere. Shout you know? out to Neo. No, shout, shout out, shout to out. He's my yeah. brother, he's my elder brother, he's yeah. a father figure, mm -hmm. he's, yeah, he's everything I ever wished for in terms of mentorship mm -hmm. and he really uplifted us because my mentality before we met him was that I don't need to work for anyone. I can do everything mm, myself. Yourself, yeah, because you're already doing and, that. Yeah, and that thing is such a lie where a lot of young 
people are like, yeah, man, seven zoom long, I'm not gonna be employed, I can do this. But there's so much power in mainstream employment. It teaches True. you so much. I remember True. now saying to us, dude, go get a job. Mm. It will teach you how to use your money. It will mm. teach mm. you how to budget. Mm. It will teach you the responsibilities that are key mm. with money and you'll be able to grow. You know, and it was like, do you have a driver's? And we didn't have driver's mm. licenses mm. driving for mm. many years. Mm. I was like, no, you can't be that ignorant. You yeah. need a driver's and get a passport, mm. you know, because you're going to travel soon. And you don't want opportunities to come and you have no plan. Now you don't have a passport. Yes, that's, yeah, that, that's true. That guy Great changed advice. our lives. Bro. It now changed our lives. You know, a huge part of what I became was his help mm. and guide, mm. guidance, you know. And I think every young man and woman needs a mentor. Mm. A mentor mm. is mm. such a key key part of a young person's life that's super true yeah because you can't all the mistakes that i could have done mm. i didn't have to do and i didn't do because now had gone through them he walked already. The path already so he he already he was able to say uh uh not here not here this is ends up here and always when i didn't listen it ended up burnt there. And I'll yeah. give you an example where my brother and I started working in advertising at FCB. It was exciting. We started earning relatively okay. And we were, had an apartment here in Benmore. And I remember Neil saying to us, because we had a golf. Okay. okay. Saying. Still no license? We had a license. Okay. Now. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> then he said, you don't have to to buy a new car, don't finance a car. Take your money and buy a house, buy an apartment together. You already have a car and you know, you can sell this golf, buy maybe a slightly better golf and just grow from there. From there. You don't have to do the financing thing. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I remember listening to him and yeah, it made sense, but I'm like to him, this guy is playing. I want to buy a mini cooper. Now. Ah, guys, there's no way. I'm not going to buy a house. I'm still young. I'm mm. 22 or whatever. Mm. Whatever it was. And guess what? I bought a car and I was paying so much for that car. The financing. Yeah. And it's crazy. There was no need for that. I could have taken that in that time. Five grand, six grand. That you're paying every month. Yes. That's crazy. And my rent was, I mean, my brother and I were sharing yeah, a, yeah, an apartment. Spending, it was yeah. like six grand each. So my car was more expensive than what than I was paying. the rent. Yeah, than the Which rent. That's crazy. If I had taken that money and I put it into buying an apartment like the one I was living in, I would have been so much more ahead. But I made that mistake and I, it was my choice. Yeah. Yeah. And I learned from it later that I bought this car that's worth 350k. At the end of the term of repaying it, I paid 550k. When you count it all up. Yeah, when like... you count it. And that's gonna, that would have been half of True. what the apartment... Yeah. Uh, Putting down a bond. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. in that five years, if I committed that money into that and I drove my bond, I would have paid off an ap apartment and, and set myself it. up. Yeah. 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 But I had to learn the hard way later to, oh goodness. And, <laughs> you know, we all make that mistake. Yeah. And I do have young people that are mentor, and I tell them the same thing that you don't have to do this, mm. but you have to let someone make, make their, their own, own choices. You know? And now let us make our own choices. When I came with my fancy Mini Cooper, he never judged me. He was happy yeah, for me. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, and. Much later, I remembered his words when I was paying off that car and um, I was drowning and I thought, Flip Nell said He this. told me. He, he told, told me. me. And only now, I'm buying my apartment. Yeah. And it's five, six years later. later. As, know? as, as... And you're live on Dead...
and you're live on Dead Radio. Someone who mentors people right now, mm. right? How do you know the difference? Because some mistakes are more expensive than others. Yeah. And I'm not just talking about money. Man, yeah, for sure. Right? For sure. How do you know how to advise someone? Basically, how do you know that the mistake that they're going to make mm. isn't going to be too costly for their life? I know, I know everyone's mistake when I see how far it will set them back. Mm, mm, but mm. it's not my place to force my ideas into mm. someone I care for. Mm. You know, it's not my place. I also have had mentors. I still have mentors and I still make mistakes, mm. even though mm. my mentors um, advise me. Mm. You know, and they've got the grace to let me make my mistakes mm. as they have made their own mistakes. So mm. the people that I mentor and I love and, you know, I still, I can see, okay, cool. I told you what I told you, but mm. I'm not, I'm going to let you make the decision because it's not my place. You need to let people go through their own journey, mm. you know. And leave space. Yeah, I leave space because even in my own life now, I still make mistakes. True. You know, True. I still fuck up. My father-in-law is one of my mentors now, you know, apart from him being the father of my wife. You know, and he's got the grace to let me make, make mistakes, mistakes. You know, and yeah. sometimes I, I have shame because, oh my goodness, he told me. Mm. And I still. And I still, yeah. you know, and yeah. sometimes shame helps me because if he had advised me on something and I want to do it, the shame of disappointing him makes me not do it. I hear that. You know, I hear that. My yeah. father-in-law and I, he knows I love cars. He loves cars too, mm. in a different way to me. But I think I love cars sometimes in an irresponsible way. Okay. You know, yeah. and we speak yeah. a lot about cars and he advised me, bruh, your car is perfect. You don't mm. need to a new end. car. Yeah. But I've got a thing for cars. So mm. every second mm. day, I want a new car. A new car, yeah. You know, yeah. but the shame of disappointing, disappointing him, him I get you. helps me because I'm thinking that Ish, I'm going to go get that g when it makes sense and yeah. all that stuff. Then I'm going to lunch yeah. in yeah. a new car. Yeah, He's going to be like, yeah. He's okay. not going to shout at me yeah, or show disappointment. Maybe he might, but I've got shame. It, so and that, it's on you. Yes, and shame is such a key thing. I find that hmm. in a lot of people's lives, the people that have no shame, uh, make maybe bigger mistakes they because do. you don't do. have that you don't have a conscience yeah you know and you just move yeah boundaries yes. in society you know again part of the things i love sharing with younger people is the importance of having the right partner you know mm. i also made those mistakes when i was young like just choosing uh, partners and you know moving through different relationships at a high rate and mm. I want the hottest girl I want you know mm. all those things young do. young boys that's that's what we want and girls yeah, I'm, I'm assuming true, true, you know true. but in the pursuit of who you want to be that vibe will set you back mm. you know I know when I was in that rabbit hole of like you know the first life the first life and mm. all that stuff. It, it didn't serve me. It just mm. wasted my time mm. and money. Mm. You know, and mm. when you have the right partner, it comes with an accountability and shame mm. to disappoint someone that believes in you in and you. loves you. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and that, when I chose my partner who's my wife now, that helped me significantly because all the things I just did to, to feed my ego yeah. and to to come out the coolest amongst my boys. Ego. I couldn't do Ego. because I'm thinking, Ish, I'm going to disappoint my partner. Mm. You know, mm. she sees mm. me better than this. Mm. 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 You know, and now, goodness, I'm going to buy another car. <laughs> you know, I'm going to buy, I love clothes. Yeah. yeah. Every second week is another sneaker. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the ones you have are still fresh. So me choosing my partner 
saved me and mm. it helped me grow so, so much. much yeah. Yeah. You know, and again, the type of person you choose is so important because I've in the past chosen someone that enabled mm, my that ego. behavior and your ego. Yeah. Okay. That ah, oh, love. We must go live wherever yeah. where I couldn't afford. Buy that new car. Yeah, Buy you, you need an M3. Sneaker. Why? Why do you? Mm. Why drive a, a, a mini? You know, cause why? She also wants a boyfriend who that who that. feeds her ego. Okay. You know, so lucky I was able uh, after some time to choose someone that loved me for me and not the idea of what I would make her look like out there. You know, so I've had a partner that loved the idea of what I would make it look like. And the challenge with a partner like that is there's always a higher speed. Mm, there's always mm, mm. a younger guy, more handsome, better car, more better money, house, more money. More access. So it's, true. True. it's a losing game. Yeah, you'll never So win. I encourage the people that are my, I love and my, I mentor to choose the right partner. Don't choose someone who's going to enable your shadows, mm. you know, because your shadows are not going to help you grow. Mm. Mm. You know, mm. it just sets you back. Mm. It holds you back. Yeah. You know. Okay. So now, yeah, now that's for me. So now you guys are now professional creatives yeah, working yeah. in the advertising space. What was your first job there? Um, it, my first job in advertising was... Um, design at okay. uh, Draft FCP and okay. it's not far from here yeah um, and Catherine um, then when I worked there Neil got us in and to when I started shout out to Neil yeah I can't again. I can't shout him out enough man yeah. he changed my life yeah. and a lot of the people in my lives lives mm -hmm. you know um, yeah it was I was a designer then, now advised that being an art director is better because you work mm. conceptually, you are thinking beyond just execution, mm. so you are more involved. And being an art director was a huge blessing because I was able to learn so much more than what I knew. That's where I learned photography, that's where I learned okay. illustration professionally professionally that's yeah. where i learned branding which i later applied in my own life for yourself for my personal yes. brand that's where i learned directing that's where i learned yeah. um advertising and marketing you know which is a huge part of my career now mm. as a film director in advertising i learned it as an art director in advertising that's where i learned the power of branding, which I use now as an artist mm. to brand myself and be a brand that I put myself out a specific way so that opportunities come. Mm. I learned all that stuff in advertising mm. or as an art director. Mm. Um, yeah, and that okay. was amazing working in advertising because that was a game changer for my life. Yeah. You know, that was university. Mm. I still learn a lot in advertising to date. To till this day. Yeah, yeah. because... It, Advertising taught me to be multi, to to maximize how to be multifaceted. Mm, 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 you know, mm. if I didn't have advertising, I wouldn't understand how to monetize myself as a brand. I wouldn't understand how to monetize myself as a painter or as a photographer. I wouldn't understand how to monetize myself as a speaker. You know, yeah. and advertising taught me all that stuff. You know. I guess it taught you how to build a brand from the ground yeah. up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Which I find it's a huge challenge for lots of artists in different yeah, industries. Yeah, you know, yeah. they, they are incredibly talented, but they don't have the skills to build themselves up as a brand. As a brand. You know, true, and... True, true, You know, it's... A, the product can be exceptional, mm. but if it has no identity, mm. It's, it's, it's hard to make it tangible or to, to remember it mm -hmm. or to monetize it. Mm -hmm. You know, I see there's on Instagram, there are so many artists that Dope are artists. incredible, yeah. like world yeah. class, yeah. but they don't understand how to monetize themselves Their as brand. a brand. And you know where they fall short most of the time? Mm -hmm. Tell us. They keep their work to themselves like this. 
their own market themselves. They're too cool to share um, their product. Their work, yeah. If you are not sharing your product, who do you think is going to share it? No one. Maybe there will be one person who believes in you. But as a brand, mm. if you are proud of your brand and you put it out there and you share it with the public, people will be able to engage with it. There's a... I remember when I started in advertising, there was a little case study we, I got, we got to access to about Coca-Cola versus Pepsi. Okay. Pepsi okay. died in Africa because they stopped marketing themselves. Mm. It's an incredible, huge, successful brand yeah. internationally. Yeah, in the world. And they yeah. thought they're too big to market themselves. Mm. Never think you're too Where's big. Pepsi now? True. Versus Coke. I, I always tell people yeah. that for you not to be marketing yourself, dude, every single day I see a, a Coca-Cola ad. That's one of the biggest brands in the world. And they advertise Bruh, every the single The biggest day. artist, the biggest musical artist mm. in the world markets themselves True. more than anyone. Yeah. To date. They don't mm. say, oh, I'm so big, I'm about marketing myself. That. It's so easy for a brand to be forgotten. So that's the thing I always advise anyone that wishes to be successful, that mm. you have to market yourself. You can't mm. be too cool to, to market, market yourself. Your work. Imagine yeah. some people on social media, like, for example, there's a young artist I love and they're incredible and I repost their work onto my stories with mm. my audience and mm. tag them. And they're not going to repost that. Because they're too cool. Yeah, they're like... And you've got other artists that are so cool, they don't put photos of themselves and they work. Mm -hmm. It's just... And the account is hidden. Mm -hmm. But that person in their back room or wherever they are, they are dreaming and wishing so bad to be successful. Yeah. But they are their own gatekeeper. Whew. Whatever. They're their you know, own you can't... gatekeeper. Yeah. yeah. A lot of people yeah. are their own gatekeepers. A lot. Oh, that is facts. And those people are usually looking out into the world like, no, they're gatekeeping me. No, they're gatekeeping Let me. Let me tell you, it's you. Everyone dreams to be successful. Everyone. Yeah. That person that's hiding themselves, their account is private, they post an image and delete it, mm, and mm, they keep changing mm. their names. Mm. You can't trace their growth. Yeah, yeah. Where they are in their corner, they are dreaming so hard yeah. to be successful. Like the people they see all the time sharing their work. Like, you know, I, I've always, I don't know who taught me this. Maybe it's Mel. Mm. Nothing is new under the sun. Yeah. The case study to what you want to be is there. It's there. It exists. It's there. Yeah. You know, if... The biggest artist in South Africa, like Nelson, mm. is still posting his work. Today. Every day. Yes. yes and he's yes. on Time magazine. Yes. And he's done all the incredible things. That's true. And he's still posting his work. That's true. If Wanda Bushe is still posting, mm. posing, mm. posting his work, if Kling Samson is still pos posting his Who work. Are you? In your little corner. And you don't even hiding. have a, a gallery, but you are so scared for people to steal your work. And you... If Erika Padu is still posting her songs today, today, if Drake. we are seen Bay, yeah, Drake, true, uh, true. Guys, then yeah. you are this small, yeah. playing big fish in no pond. Mm. Uh, <laughs> you drown. Yeah, uh, you yeah. won't exist because yeah. you're not even in the water. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So that's what I always encourage people. You, your work may not be met with words you want to hear. Mm. But it's not about that. Mm. You know, you have the words you want to hear. If your work is enough for you, that's enough. Just put it out to the universe, how they receive it. It's, you know, that's you don't know you. where your luck is. Mm. You don't know yeah. where opportunities. And, sure. people, and social media has made opportunities so accessible, bro. Yeah. So accessible. Yeah. Like, I remember in the early 2000s when I made my own, when I was doing my portfolio, if it wasn't by chance that Neo came to my house and he was brought by our friend yes, and yes. 
if I didn't have my drawings on my walls in the bedroom and graffiti. That and opportunity I, never would have. Yeah. Because yeah. where do I send my portfolio? Yeah. And if I'm sending my portfolio to TBWA or, or, or whatever agency at that time, where's my starting point? Because first of all, those guys want, where's, where are your qualifications? Where, mm. Which year were you at Vega? Mm. Mm. You know, where there's a whole system. Luck and opportunity finds you on the at way. At work. Yeah. Luck and opportunity will find you at work. Yeah. None of it will find you in your room Chilling. hiding hiding your work mm. and you've got mm. these incredible paintings. Not that they're not incredible or mm. short film or script. And you say, yeah, they're going to steal it. I'm not going to put it. You're not going to exist. And here's something tough to hear. Your success to happen, you need to be ripped off first. You have to be ripped. You're going to be ripped off. Yeah. I still yeah. get ripped off. If I want opportunity, I'm going to get it. Yeah. Yeah. I'll be ripped off and I'll think, goodness. And I think too many people are too afraid of being ripped off. You know, in the industry of film, mm. I'm a film director. Yeah. They'll say, yeah, I don't, I'm going to be independent. I don't, I'm not going to join a production company mm. because, yeah, they, you know, the fees are so small. Why do they want to, you know? I can do this on my own. You know, unfortunately, industries, if you want to be a big player, you have to be a part of an industry. Sure. And maybe when you've paid your dues, you can open your little mm. shop and be independent mm. when you've been co-signed enough in the industry. Yeah. Drake couldn't be Drake without being signed. True. Without standing next to Lil Wayne, yes. Birdman, Cashman. You can now... True break off and be his own thing. Mm. But he couldn't arrive as yeah. Drake. Yeah. There's no way. Yeah. Kendrick couldn't arrive mm. as Kendrick. True. You know? True. And, you know, I'll give you examples. There are really big, successful, unsigned artists, mm. maybe internationally. Mm. You know, I, I think Chance the Rapper is one of them. Mm. Mm. He's big. Yeah. He's huge. He's huge. But... But he's not Drake. Yeah, true. He's not Kendrick. There is a ceiling. There's a cap. Yeah. You know, he's not Kanye West. Kanye West didn't arrive as a billionaire. You've seen his documentary. Yeah, you saw yeah. his come up. The genius, yeah. He yeah, unapologetically yeah. put himself out. Market he tips. cried yeah, yeah. harder than all of us. Yeah. 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 You know? Yeah. He's yeah. still hungry today. Today. He's still making music today. You know, so you don't be above yourself. Yeah, yeah. And don't be your own gatekeeper, you know? So, um, I want to switch gears and talk about your art for a little bit, right? Mm. Um, I like to view your art as melanated art, right? Mm. Very um, African-centric. Mm. It's grounded in what does it mean to be an African? Yeah, yeah. And... In a time where I feel like the world is going through an identity problem mm. and you're someone who's very grounded in who you are and your identity, mm. what does it mean to you mm. to be African and melanated? Yeah, it's a very layered uh, question, but I'll try my best to yeah. answer it in a way I understand it. But I think for me, being African in this time means... Uh, being free mm. to be, right? And I find that being African and now that we are free to be, there's still a huge expectation of how we should be, mm. you know? So if there's an expectation of how you should be, are you free, you know? Then because being a black person, uh, you know, and maybe this is how I feel. Mm. There's mm. so much of who you should be that's very prescribed of you. True. And if True. you step out of that, it's jarring. Yeah. You know, and in my artistic uh, process, in my work, I use my work to unpack and deconstruct uh, these expectations and notions of how I should be okay, as, a black, as man a black man in this time. Yeah. Right, and because how I am expected to be as a black man uh, in my society, in my community, is being black means 
you know, I need to tough, I'm heterosexual, yeah. True. you know, I'm Christian. Mm. You know? Yes, um, yes, yeah. yes, yes, and, yes. And, you know, and I find that it takes away the intention of the freedom we have fought for, mm. you know. So deconstructing that for myself is very important because what of what I became is my own. You know, if I didn't have, you know, are you? No, 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 go, go, go. Okay, cool. If I didn't have um, my mm. heterosexual, would I have been Christian? You know, sure. uh, how would my energy towards mm. women be? Would I see women and just objectify them mm. as a mm. position for me to have? Mm. You know, would I see them as my equal? You know, and my work de deconstructs that. Okay. You know, that what is being a man in my time? In your time. You know, yeah. and what of all of that is my own? You know, um, because colonialism, not to be negative, colonialism came into Africa and deconstructed yeah. what uh, masculinity looks like yeah. in the African man. Yeah. You know, and the even African... Even our identity. Even our identity. We yeah. were emasculated, we were exoticized. Mm. Um, we were prescribed mm. ways of being. Yeah. You know, and that um, prescription uh, of the colonial prescription of the black man mm. didn't only affect black men. True. You know, it affected True. us all. So doing the work of... Mm deconstructing that and finding my own core spiritually, mm. sexually, mm. and um, okay. yeah. That's, your art basically helps you to deconstruct um, whatever the world is trying to put on the you. The expectations a, yeah. and notions yeah. that made me who I have become mm. unconsciously. Okay. You okay. know, that's what's important to me because if being Christian is what I'm expected to be, and if I move away from that, I'm a disappointment. Yeah. But who am I disappointing? Facts. And who's spirituality for? True. You True. know, and, True. and are you my free? sexuality. Yeah. If I want to be bisexual or mm. gay or curious or just as heterosexual, mm. it shouldn't be prescribed. Mm. It should be my own. Mm. You know, and yeah, we grew up in a time where we have the blessing of questioning that and finding who we are mm, mm. for ourselves. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, a random nerd question I have, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I have a lot of friends who are musicians, right? So musicians, what they do is they record a lot of music and the music that we end up hearing is only less than 10%. For right? sure. So the rest of it stays in the computer. For sure. How do artists, and that's how they carve out the best idea for the best song. Yeah, yeah. How do artists do that? Like, do mm. you paint a hundred canvases and then we only get to see ten? Yeah. Or do you only paint ten and those yeah, are yeah. the ones that we all get to see? Yeah, that's an interesting question. I think the artistic process varies yeah 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 for everyone. Uh, for for everyone you know even when i was still making a lot of music i did not make a lot of songs okay. to get to an amazing song okay. i spent a lot of time with one song okay. to make it amazing, amazing for me um then with my paintings i've got the same approach yes i do have paintings that i've done that i don't put out mm. because uh maybe I, I don't you. like them yeah the yeah. way i i should mm. Um, yeah, I work on a painting for a long time until I'm happy. Um, now what I've added, which is similar to what you say into my process, is sketching. So I okay. sketch out the idea loosely a lot of times and find the composition and find the layers. Okay, cool, this is what it should look like. Then from there, maybe I can do it in charcoal okay. and see, okay, cool, it works. Then from there, I can... if because I'm a photographer and sometimes I do a lot of figuration and I'll say, okay, cool. I'll photograph myself in the way of the idea that I've sketched out. Mm. 
and add the layers then I'll, uh, I'll go and work it on Photoshop to see if it's close to what I'm imagining okay. and if I like it then I'll take it onto a canvas okay. you know so that's your process that's my process and sometimes artists sell their process like those mm, sketches okay like my brother does that's my brother's process most of the okay. time he does a lot of sketches of what he's going to paint okay. and it's got like mountains and mountains of these sketches and sketchbooks and sometimes he sells his sketchbooks okay you know to, to collectors that are more interested in the process than the finished product okay you know? so yeah okay dope yeah i just wanted to find out what your process is yeah um and then last thing yeah. what's your last word because i want you to look into the camera and then leave People out there, what's your last word for black South Africans, black Africans um, out there? We already know 2024 is a voting year in South Africa. Yeah. Um, every time you go on the internet, the world is on fire. People's anxiety is at an all-time high. Yeah. Um, what's your last word for people out there who are trying to figure it out, who are creative like you? Mm. Um, and yeah, i just trying to figure out the world. Yeah, I think uh, the words I have to say for everyone that's figuring out their path. First of all, we are blessed to be in South Africa. Uh, this place is incredible. And if you've been fortunate enough to travel of late, I'm sure you can agree with me that it's amazing here. It's beautiful. We've got everything the world has and more and most importantly affordable so don't jump on the gravy train of negatively seeing our country because it's beautiful here and it's amazing and without being uh, terrible or negative you know i know we've got the elections coming but some countries are faced with choosing biden and um, trump trump yeah yeah, so yeah. I know we've got yeah. the ANC, DA, and Rise, and a few other yeah. uh, parties. EFF, PA, but yeah. you know, don't jump on the negative bandwagon of our country. We've got um, incredible things happening here. We've got an incredible country. I'm still hopeful, and yeah, the choice to go somewhere else might be there, but it's not gonna be better than here, in my opinion. So stay put, stay positive. I think it's important for us to vote because voting affects every little thing True. we do. You know, the party we choose, is, we choose um, controls the economy, controls yeah. everything. everything. So yeah. it's important you, you make that choice, even yeah. though maybe it's not 100% what you want. want yeah. But be involved, get your, get your hands dirty to get informed look at yeah more information on different parties and see where you best fit and lastly hard work always pays off even if you are not doing right if you are committed to bettering yourself opportunities will come just take your time and don't expect immediate success because fast success breeds ego and that's not what you want because it's not sustainable. Okay. Thank you so much for the chat, bro. I really, no, for sure. really appreciate it. For sure. Shout out for joining us on another very special episode of Dead Radio. Um, please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. 2024 is a very important year for voting. So please, everybody, let's get together and make that happen. And uh, we'll be back again for another episode. And you're live on Dead Radio. Yeah.